Right, up to this moment, uh, we've just looked at application problems that fit a particular model type. So in other words, when you're doing your homework on that, you're going to have your notes out, and you're going to go, oh, this looks like a mixture, mixture problem, or oh, this is a, an interest problem, uh, rather than have to problem solve and think of this on your own. Uh, but I'm not going to be dishonest with you. There are times where you just have to think about the model and come up with your own way to solve the equation. And uh, it doesn't really fit a particular model that we've seen so far, other than the fact that it's a linear process versus a quadratic process. So I wanted to take a few minutes and go through uh, some, some typical linear models that would be fair game for us to be aware of that don't quite fit under any of the other types of equations that we've seen so far. Okay, so the first one uh, is Leia. Leia has paid time and a half for hours in, uh, worked in excess of 40 and double time for hours worked on Sunday. If Leia had a gross weekly wage of 456 for work in 50 hours, four of which were on Sunday, what was her regular hourly rate? Kind of a good question to ask. Uh, so if I work so many hours this week, how much am I going to get paid, right? Okay, so we're going to break this down into three categories. Uh, we're going to break it down into the regular time, uh, the time and a half, let's see, time and a half, I guess I don't want to put a, a fraction in there to kind of confuse you, so time and a half, and a half, uh, sorry, half, and then we want double. Okay, so uh, we know uh, what? Well, we know that uh, total, uh, we know the total was 50. And we know that uh, she only gets these other stuff if she works over 40. So regular time, she must have worked the 40. Uh, time and a half, let's see, do we know that? Well, we know she worked double uh, four hours on Sunday. And we know that, uh, well, all total has to add up to 50, so what's missing? Well, 40 here, 4 there, so it's got to be 6 in the time and a half category. Okay, so then uh, we're going to figure out uh, the amount she gets paid. So the amount of money she gets from the regular is going to be the 40 hours times her regular pay. The time and a half means she earns... Uh, 1.5 of her regular pay, and the double time means she earns twice of her regular pay. And we know that um, she ended up getting uh, 4.56 for everything. So if I take each of those quantities and add them up, so 40x plus 6 times 1.5x plus 4 times 2x. So that's the amount of money she gets from each of her type of hours. That has to add up to the 456. So, let's see, this would be 40x plus uh, 1.5 times 6, which is 9, plus 4 times 2, which is 8x, equals 456. Uh, again, we've got lots of like terms all over the place. So if I add 40 plus the 9 plus the 8, uh, I should get 57. And then I want to divide 456 by 57. And so she's getting um, exactly $8 per hour. So I'm going to make it seem like 800 She's getting eight dollars per for her regular uh, hourly wage. All right. Uh, the suggested list price of a new car is eighteen thousand. The dealer's cost is eighty-five percent of list. How much will you pay if the dealer's willing to accept a hundred dollars over the cost of the car? Okay. So a new car is eighteen thousand. Uh, the dealer's cost, so the amount they paid for it. Okay, so this we got to think about for a second. Um, even though they say that that you should be paying eighteen thousand for it, 
the dealer only paid 85% of that. So they only paid 80.85 times the 18,000. And so going to a calculator, um, I got that they paid 15,300. So your cost uh, would be that amount plus 100. So 15,300 plus 100. So you're going to pay 15,400. So again, it didn't it didn't really fit any of our norm known patterns, but it was still an a word problem that required us to understand a little bit about uh, percents and sort of how to uh, model it algebraically to figure out how much we need to pay. The last topic uh, that we will address uh, as far as modeling goes, and keep in mind there's other things out there, but most of the time it's going to be one of these types of equations that we've encountered. Uh, so the last type we're going to look at are applications of a Pythagorean theorem. So let me kind of draw out a right triangle, and we can label things as we see them. Uh, how many right triangles have an hypotenuse that measures 4x plus 5 inches? So 4x plus 5 and legs that measure 3x plus 13 and x, uh, what are the dimensions of the triangle? Okay, uh, so the question being, uh, how many, we got three sides, three unknowns, um, how many different ways can I come up with numbers that fit these particular patterns? Well, the interesting thing is, uh, given the fact that we're dealing with Pythagorean theorem and right triangles, um, any x value that I come up with should satisfy the Pythagorean theorem in that, kind of remind you of that. So if we call that uh, hypotenuse is C, that's A, and that's B, the formula that relates them is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is kind of why we call this a quadratic model. So if I fill in what I know, I know that uh, take the x and square it, the 3x plus 13 and square it, and the 4x plus 5 and square it. Uh, and any x that I can come up with that will work in that uh, will give me the dimensions of the triangle. And will actually let me, so if I, if I solve for x and I only find that there's one number, then I know there's only one right triangle that fits that pattern. Um, but if I end up with like 10 numbers, then I know there's 10 triangles that fit that, and then my job is to come up with the dimensions. Uh, I feel the need to remind us of a uh, pattern that we've seen before, and that's a plus b squared is square the first, double the product, square the last. Uh, so if we remember that pattern, this is going to speed up our calculations here. So x squared, we're going to drop. Okay, 2x plus 13, so square the first, 3x squared is 9x squared, double the product. Okay, so I need the product of 3x and 13. Well, 3 times 13 is 39, and if I double that, I get 78x, and then 13 squared is 169. Kind of nice that we have that little pattern that we can use. Uh, same trick with the other side, so the 4x plus squared, uh, 4x plus 5 quantity squared, uh, square the first, so the square of 4x is 16x squared, uh, double the product, so 4x times 5 is 20x, uh, then double that we get 40x uh, plus the last squared, so plus 25. I've got like terms all over the place with this. So here we got, uh, let's see, x squared and 9x squared is 10x squared plus 78 plus 169 and 16x squared plus 40x plus 25. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, I want to bring all the... Uh, all the terms on one side it fits our quadratic procedure. So I'm going to subtract off 10x squared. I'm going to subtract off 78x. 
and subtract off 169. And so, uh, let's see, the 16x squared minus 10x squared is 6x squared. Uh, 40 minus 78 is minus 38x. And 25 minus 169 is 144. All right, now at this point, um, we going through our quadratic steps in our head. Uh, first step is to try factoring, um, and if that doesn't work, maybe we want to go straight to the quadratic formula. I, I suspect that this is factorable. Um, just something in me says that this should this should be nice, pretty numbers since we're dealing with the sides of a triangle. Uh, and so, with that idea in mind, uh, I'm going to try factoring. And looking at my expression, uh, I think I can simplify this down, because I know 6, 38, and 140, those are all even. So I know I can at least take a 2 out. So 3x squared uh, minus uh, 19x uh, minus uh, 72. And then I just have to focus in on the 3x squared minus 19x minus 72 rather than the other set of numbers. So if it is factorable, um, I should see it right here. Okay, so let's look at 3x squared. That's either x and 3x, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, 72, I got 1 and 72. Uh, I got 2 and 36, uh, I know 3 goes in there 24 times. Uh, I can see in, uh, 4 has to work as well. Uh, 5 clearly doesn't work, I know 6 does because I can see 36 there, so 72 divided by 6 is 12. Now the closer these two numbers get to each other, the, the like, you know, the, the, I know I'm done at that point. Um, let's see, I know 7 does not work, because, you know, 7 times 10 is 70, so there's no way 7 is going to go into 72. 8, um, 8 works, and 8 would be 8 times 9. And at that point, I've sort of found all the possible combinations that, that could possibly work here. Okay, um, another thing I notice myself a little more space, is that negative 19x means that there's a negative and a positive in there. And so I'll, I know it's got to be 3x and x. Um, I might not know where the positive or negative is. So let me kind of hold off on that for a second. But I know I'm going to have to triple one number and subtract or add it to the other to get the negative 19. So I can kind of look at um, these things. And let's sort of think about if I <clears throat> triple them. So let's say I go 3 times 4 and 18 times 1. Well, that's 12 and 18. That, that's not going to be enough. Uh, what about 3 times 6 and 12 times 1? Uh, again, that's, let's see, 3 times 6 is 18 and 12, so that's not going to give me my 19. Uh, what about 3 times 8 and 9 times 1? Uh, well, 3 times 8 is 24. Um, so 24 and 9 is not going to be enough. Okay, but what if I reverse it? Let's, let's go uh, 3 times 9 and 8 times 1. Maybe that will work. Um, let's see, 3 times 9 is 27. 27 minus 8. Ooh, I think we just got it. So if I multiply the 3 and the 9, that'll give me a 27. That's an 8. And 28, 27 minus 8 is enough to get me a 19. So anyway, so it's kind of a quick quick way to play with the numbers and see that. So I need the 3 times the 9 when I set up the foil. And then I need the 1 times the 8. And I need uh, the 27 piece. I need that to actually be the negative. So... It's got to be x minus 9 and 3x plus 8. Okay, so then from here, I'm going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Now, 0 equals 2 does not give me anything. So there's no solution for it. 
uh, 3x plus 8 equals 0, and x minus 9 equals 0. So here I subtract off 8, and I get 3x equals negative 8. So x is negative 8 thirds. And here I add 9, and x equals 9. OK. So kind of go into what just happened here. I said, using Pythagorean theorem, that if there is a triangle that works, then x has got to be a number that will define the two legs and the hypotenuse to maintain that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So when I typed it in the formula and worked out the math, I was only able to find one number that makes that statement true. So back to our two questions here. Uh, how many right triangles with those current dimensions uh, give you a valid right triangle? And there's only one triangle that does that. And the dimensions are 9 is one of our numbers. Sorry, I'll kind of set this up here. So we got a x equals 9. Uh, here we get 3 times 9 plus 13. So 3 times 9 plus 13 is 40. So the dimensions are a 9, a 40, and the last one is 40 times 9 plus 5. So 4 times 9 plus 5 gives me a 41. Okay, so how many triangles are there that satisfy that? One, and it's the one that has the dimensions of 9, 40, and 41. So there you go.